Today's date is April the 14th, 1996. The survivor's name is Lanka Ilko. Her maiden name is Moskowitz. The interviewer's name is Hanan Posner. The interview is being conducted in Southfield, Michigan, in the United States, in the English language. The interviewer's name is Hanan, C-H-A-N-A-N, Posner, P-O-S-N-E-R. Today's date is April 14th, 1996. The survivor's name is Lanka, L-A-N-K-A, Ilko, I-L-K-O-W. This interview is being conducted in Southfield, Michigan, United States, in the English language. Could you tell us your name, please? Slenka Ilko, L-A-N-K-I-L-K-O-W. And what was your maiden name? Moskowitz, M-O-S-K-O-V-I-T-C. Were you given any other names, any uh, nicknames or? No, I was married and I was Lebovich then. And uh, what's your birth date? March 20, 1920. And what was the city that you were born? Nova Selitz. N-O-V-E-S-E-L-I-C-E. What country is that in? Czechoslovakia. It was that time. And what kind of a town was Nova Selitz like? It was a small town. Mostly farmers lived there. No rich people, just old working people. And how many people were in your family growing up? Well, we was four children. What are their names? In, in, uh, was, uh, I was first, and uh, Dan was Herman, and Margaret, and Samuel. What's your father's name? Meyer Moskowitz. And your mother's name? Bluma Moskowitz. What did your father do for a living? He was a shoemaker. And? Worked, worked in the fields, mostly. What kind of work was that? We had a lot of fields, you know. We grow potatoes, corn, everything. Name it, and we had that. So it was a lot of work. Did you ever help out on the field? I never had a childhood. A seven-year-old, my mother came and took me down from the bed to go to feed the chickens. And I, she went away, and I was thinking, oh, for five minutes I go back to bed, and I fell to sleep. And she came in, and she hit me. So I didn't feed the chickens yet. But. Uh, we didn't get to eat. We make brocha, and then we get breakfast in uh, Maidani first. And um, we went on. Then I went to school and come home and work again. Whatever I had to help out. We had a lot of animals, so I have to feed these animals. And uh, the workers was going to, we had people who we hired to work in the fields. So we had to prepare food and to bring food to them. And <clears throat> then we had cows, we had to milk cows. I couldn't even hold it in my hand, but I milked it, you know. Were, were the people that, you said the workers on the farm, were these people from the, the town of Yeah, Minnesota? townspeople who didn't have farms, you know. Were these Jewish or non-Jewish people? No, no Jewish people. It was altogether five Jewish families. So one guy, he had a grocery store. And uh, in another family, they had like a bar. But in Europe, they didn't set a bar, they set a korchma, you know. In, the peasants Sundays went to dance there and drinking and dancing and killing each other. We was not allowed to go there.
you know, it's children, nobody. But I wanted to see, so I said, well, I want to <coughs> go there playing music. So now Jewish girls don't go in a place like this. It was not allowed. Was there anybody else uh, who was living in your household besides your, your brothers and your no, sister? No, no. Uh, a malamut, uh, <coughs> you know, when uh, they had uh, the malamut in the town, so we shared. When it was our time, he stayed with us. W were there any grandparents also? Uh, my grandfather only. And was yeah. he living there? He was too? living there, and he was very religious, a long beard, and pious. And uh, <laughs> he was always learning, night and day he was learning, because he already didn't work on the farms. And uh, he started selling some of the farms, was too much for us to handle. So one thing, we was never hungry, he had food. And uh, the last year before they took us away, was a crab with potatoes, with everything. And my father, they took away for, uh, to, a, to a labor camp. And, uh, and I say to my mother, oh, we will have enough potatoes for the whole town. She says, you know, my child will be a big hunger. I said, I will be hungry if we have so much food. She says, will be a big war and we'll be very hungry. And it stuck to my head all the time that she said that. And all the time in Auschwitz, I was thinking about the potatoes we buried in the ground. So uh, my mother was with us. So she always said, what we can cook from potatoes, make all kind of meals, you know. Schlieschkes and Krepler, and I don't know if you know what this is, and all the things you can make from potatoes. But uh, we had, we wasn't allowed to make during the war, we was not allowed to make white flour. But on the black market we made it, and we had chalas, white chalas for Shabbos all the time. And we had meat, chickens all the time, but Dan was not allowed to slaughter. <coughs> so I used to go to the next town to a butcher, Hungarian butcher, and I bought meat from him. And he told me, Lenka, you just go home, don't worry. If they come ask me, I tell them. But I didn't trust them. I bought anyway the meat. And brought home, we gave away the neighbor the meat. So the genders, they come check. Where did you buy? I said, Basar was she bought. So they went to ask. And they, yeah, she bought it. And uh, they didn't bother us too much because they come to the town and if they wanted to eat, so where did they go to the Jews? They didn't have where to go to eat. So we had really a nice life in uh, nobody was was just one she is in school always called me Jew because they had uh, you know the priest came for uh, uh, Catholicism and so we, they, we went out and we come in he was always hitting me was sitting in back of me and hitting me so I told my father, and my father went there, and he gave it to him. He says, you will leave it alone. But we was the priest in, uh, in by us, he was Greco-Catholic, so he was married before he was ordained. And they, they had twins, we was born the same day. So we used to go to each other. Uh, coming Christmas, so they invited me all the time. She said she made with margarine, but my mother said, don't eat nothing. Or birthdays we used to keep together. And the priest came to us always to talk to my father. And uh, on Sunday, the church was 
across from our house on the, on the hill. So uh, we, heard, we heard the sermon. He always said the Jews killed Jesus. So this was going on, you know, my father used to argue with them all the time why he says that. He said, well, I have in my Bible, and I say what the Bible says, and you believe in what you believe. I don't bother you. So we had hardship with that, you know, with the Jesus. We had <laughs> fights with the Goyim, but mostly, you know, nobody was anti-Semitic. I didn't just when already I grew up, and uh, I didn't like to be uh, <coughs> home, so I went to another town, Berezna. That's how I met my husband, and uh, to learn how to sew. And there I met. Was I was already sixteen. So I met the two boys in one day on Rosh Hashanah. We went to Tashlech, you know what Tashlech is. And coming back, I come with a bridge, and I'm in the middle between the two boys. And one woman screamed at me, liar, hunt him Rosh Hashanah. So today in Rosh Hashanah, you're going with two boys. Who will you marry? I say, ask Tante Esther by the boat. And I think I said that in a time which really happened this way. So uh, there already in Berezna was a very nice Jewish city, a bigger city already. It was a lot of Jews. So I didn't like to come home. My mother always wanted me home. So uh, after that, you know, we, I, my, he wanted to get married, my first husband. So my mother was very happy. I wanted to go to America. Because my grandfather told me, don't stay in Europe, because every 25, 30 years they kill Jews. And I said, Zaidi, why would they kill me? I killed them. He says, no, just go to America. And he gave me the names of his sisters. I should go to America. And my mother said, no, you're the oldest, and we want to take you into the Hooper, and you're not going nowhere. So in America, she said, the stones are trafe, which is true, you know. And uh, so she, I remained in Europe, and I got married. You know, I was too young to get married, but... How old were you? Eighteen. How long were you married for? Well, we was married about two years, but they was in uh, 41. They was taking who wasn't born in Hungary. This was in 39, we was occupied from the Hungarian regime. So uh, they was taking away the, who was from Poland or from the Slovakia, they was taking them away. So my first husband's brother, they took away with the family. They had three beautiful girls, but she was very smart. For some reason, she came back. They took away all the clothes from her, naked. They come to the border, and they let her come back to Hungary. So I always was afraid for that. So my husband and I, we was, when it was bad days, and the police was in town, so we went in the wilderness and stayed overnight and so on. And come down, down they took them away for forced labor. But that time, I used to, for 500 uh, pengu, this uh, Hungarian money, like 500 uh, dollar, I bought them out. He was home uh, three, four weeks, and they called him back. So 
down the long, the longest time he stayed was six months. And then they took him that time, the last time, he told me, I will never see you again. He had a feeling, because they took him to Budapest. And I went once, but I will go visit him. He said, no, don't come. He didn't want I should come. And from there, they took him to Poland. So I don't know exactly what happened to him, but he didn't come back. And mine, I went, when it was a, a really bad, the, the soldiers, the Hungarian soldiers, if, uh, because they took away my husband and I had uh, an apartment, so they come knocking the windows. So I was scared to be home alone, so I went to my parents back. And uh, I worked again like a horse <laughs> all the time, night and day, you know, to scoop the potatoes in the corn and all the time. And my mother said, rush, rush, the, the worker should go after you. As I come home in the evening, I couldn't <laughs> straighten out my back. And uh, things got, I don't have back problems, but it was hard, hard work. And I like to go on the horses, but my mother wouldn't let me. Girls don't go on horses, I didn't know why, but she had her reasons. And uh, so I was home uh, for Pesach. Now I come home in September, I mean, when my brother died before Rosh Hashanah. And my father wasn't home. They took him for, uh, for hard labor. So <clears throat> uh, this was a tragedy when the brother died. Which brother was this? Herman. And we don't know exactly if he was killed by the police or so. The city came, they said a heart attack. But I don't know, he never had heart problem. I didn't need them, but I have no. So uh, it was very hard on my mother. You know, she was always crying. <clears throat> and my father got a telegram and he should come home because the son died. But he was thinking they're making a joke. So he come home to Ungvar, to his sister. And she says, Meyer, you go home, you know. They called him Herschel, in Yiddish. Herschel died. So then he believed. And he come home, he had to sit Shiva alone already. And uh, this was in September. And so in, in Pesach came. We had a very nice Pesach because, you know, my dad went to the city, he brought masses, he brought uh, big thing with wine, schlepping all the time, and uh, we had a nice Pesach. So they, when we put up the dishes on the attic, and um, my mother asked the guy, uh, he should bring us uh, yeast, buy us yeast. And he brought it over, and my mother said, well, tomorrow we bake bread. And we never did nothing. In the morning, the police came and they took us away. They said, you just take, but we didn't take nothing. We could take uh, uh, something to cover up and so in, uh, in the ghetto, but in, we didn't take nothing. So we was freezing to death. People was giving us things when we slept there on the ground. And uh, that I have a, a friend, he was from the next town, they was triplets, the boys. And he come, he was freezing, and he come and he says to my mother, can I lay here near Leah? He, she says, no, you can come next to me. And we, when we meet each other, he always, he's in Los Angeles, he always tells me my mother wouldn't let me, he should lay next to me and how he says how he was frozen. And from there, when they took us first in a school, 
in the next town. And they searched us through and took everything away. Anything you had, they took away. My sister had a little silver ring, which her brother gave her. And she was begging they should leave it. No, they took away. So she cried even more for that ring. And uh, from there, they, we was there two, three days. They took us to Ungwer. And this was a factory, a, a brick factory. And no. they took us there, and everybody, the town, next town, and so on, they was, we was laying next, next to each other. But so we was like this in Dubrovnik and so in Berezna. And if I look at my, in front of my eyes, I say the rabbi from Berezna in the Dayan, they shaved off the beards and the pious and everything. But they wasn't eating. They give us a little soup or so to eat, but they wasn't eating because it's not kosher, but it was kosher because I help. I always liked to cook. Always was interested in cooking. So we was cooking and we used nothing, just margarine and uh, oil. So I used to bring for them, I, I used to steal like uh, onion, garlic, you know, and put in a pot and carry out and brought for all these people. And they ate that in bread, the bread they ate. And uh, I don't know how long we was there. Well, before we, we go any further, I, I want to just bring you back a little bit. Uh, um, could you discuss a little bit about what it was like growing up, uh, going to school, what school was like? Well, was uh, I, I went to seventh grade or eighth grades, eighth grades in school, and it was Russian in Czech. The school, we learned Russian in Czech. Everybody spoke Russian to go in. And after that, I finished. They would not uh, girls. They wouldn't let to go higher in school because you have to go to another city. So my parents wouldn't let me because I, they couldn't, I mean, I would have to go eat in the houses, you know, just by people. And uh, they didn't want that. So they say, you don't have to go to school. My sister wanted badly to go. The teacher begged my parents that she can stay in his parents' house. You know, he was, his name was Schwarz, but he was, uh, from, um, uh, he spoke German and everything. So they, uh, from Schweiz, they was from Schweiz. So uh, he wanted my sister to go because she was very good in school. So again, my parents didn't want in front of what she will eat and so on. They worried all the time about that, but look what happened. So, uh, uh, when I finished school, so I worked at home for a while and then I decided that I want to learn how to sew. I always broidered. I made, I made all my uh, uh, trousseau. I was a, a child just with uh, initials, with my initials and everything. So reading, they, I liked books to read, but I had to hide the book. My mother shouldn't see it, I'm reading. I liked, you know, books, love stories, and so I, I liked that. But I was not allowed to do it, so I had to hide. Once I went in the garden, sitting there and reading, and my mother calls me, Leia, 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 as I hide the book on the, a tree, you know. And one day, she was going to do something in the garden, the book fell down. So I denied, I said, it's not my book. Somebody put there. And uh, it was a hard life this way for girls to grow up 
in small towns. Because I was the only girl in town. The, there was boys younger from me. But uh, uh, the matter of fact, after the war, I got very close with one. He's in Israel, in Tel Aviv. When I come to Israel and I see him, I hug him, I kiss him, I love him, because his name was Herschel too. They were named after, the same, after his grandfather. So, uh, and it was her a heart for girls. Even when I was engaged already, it was a poor involved. So, I couldn't go, my father come with me. All over I was going, my father was there. So the boys didn't like it. They said, what do your grandfather worry about? I mean, your father worry about. Doesn't let you out. So it uh, was, wasn't easy to grow up in Europe. But there was places which the people was more free, the youngsters and so. But in the small towns, they kept you very strict. And uh, 